war between Ashok Gehlot and his one-time deputy Sachin Pilot. Gehlot is called Pilot Gaddar, uh, Nalayak, Nikamma, the choicest of abuses. But why this open and blatant name-calling and that too? When the Congress should be putting up a united front ahead of Rahul Gandhi's big yatra rolling into Rajasthan and before the Grand Old Party can defend its fortress in Rajasthan before next year's elections where the BJP is breathing fire. Will Ashok Gehlot pipe down? Will the new Congress President Mr. Kharge take action as was recommended by the disciplinary committee? Or is all of it going to be brushed under the carpet to Sachin Pilot's detriment yet again. But first, the story. Ashok Gehlot and Sachin Pilot are once again at loggerheads. This time, the battle has intensified just days ahead of the Bharat Joro Yatra entering Rajasthan. It all started during a rally in Savai Madhupur. While addressing the rally, Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot openly attacked Sachin Pilot. He reminded everyone of Pilot's 2020 rebellion and even called him a traitor. Sachin Pilot, on his part, didn't hold back either. He believes that comments made by Gehlot were completely unnecessary and called the allegations against him baseless. Pilot went on to say that nothing is permanent in politics as Congress has lost twice under Gehlot's leadership. The Bharatiya Janata Party um, was squarely defeated in Rajasthan when I was a Congress Party president. And uh, Ashok Ghanot ji has been Chief Minister twice. Both times under his leadership, the Congress Party lost badly. Despite that, uh, when we won in 2018, uh, the leadership in the Congress Party decided that he should become CM for the third time. And we all uh, agreed to that. Senior Congress leaders are trying to douse the fire in Rajasthan ahead of the Bharat Joro Yatra. The Grand Old Party called the conflict rhetoric and asked them to resolve the issue at the organizational level. Congress Party Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Joro Yatra is scheduled to enter Rajasthan on the 3rd of December. But Congress's state unit is scrambling to put up a united face. The situation was similar in Punjab when Navjot Singh Sidhu and Captain Amrinder Singh stood against each other. That infighting eventually led to Congress's rout in the state. Now with infighting intensifying in Rajasthan, which is going into polls next year, will the Congress lose another state? All right, let's open this up to our guest tonight. Rakhi Rathor is spokesperson of the Rajasthan BJP. Sanjay Jha, former Congress leader and uh, political analyst. Rashid Kidvai, author and senior journalist who's been tracking the Congress party for a number of decades now. Kailash Adhikari is director with Governance Now. Sanjay, let me start with you first. The words that uh, Ashok Gehlot used for such in pilot in the last few days, Nalayak, Nikamma and Gaddar. Surely no politician worth, uh, you know, worth his salt wants to be referred by these words and that too at a time when Bharat Jodo is all set to enter Rajasthan in the next week. You have to unmute Sanjay, you have to unmute, please. Zaka, can you hear yeah, me now? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Well, it is pretty obvious that Mr. Gerlot seems to be highly disturbed at the moment. Uh, I mean, of course, he's used pretty nasty and vulgar words against Sachin even earlier. You rattled off some of them. But currently, I think the provocation is very straightforward. He has got the message, I think, uh, subtle, oblique, or very upfront, I don't know, that he is likely to be replaced as the Rajasthan chief minister. I have my own, you know, kind of uh, uh, sources that tell me that Sachin is the preferred candidate. It's already been a belated decision, not yet taken. Uh, and he will probably be the chief ministerial face for the Congress in 2023. And Mr. Gelot, who's committed political harakiri by 
actually, you know, creating an internal rebellion within the Congress when the Congress president elections were coming up, uh-huh. has at the moment ostracized himself. He's like a pariah within the core Congress think tank. The Gandhi family doesn't trust him anymore. But, but, but Sanjay, Rajasthan Sanjay, two things. No, no, Sanjay, so, Sanjay, two things. One is that uh, Mr. Gehlot still has the numbers in Rajasthan. For whatever it's worth, the last time too, when Sachin Pilot did that rebellion a few years ago, the reason why he was not successful was because he doesn't have the numbers. So let, let's let's talk about pure hard numbers here, number one. Okay. Number yeah. two, number two, uh, Sanjay, the fact is also that Mr. Gehlot, for whatever it's worth, you're saying he's out of favor with the Gandhi family, so on and so forth, but he is still uh, looking after Gujarat affairs for the Congress party. Well, I think too late to make any changes of that. We'll have to go and see how how well the Congress does in Gujarat. At the moment, it seems to be on the back foot. But let me answer the question to you on the numbers. Mm-hmm. Now, let, you, you know something, Zaka, where the Congress MLAs are concerned, they will finally respond to the diktat coming from the Congress high command, which I think, let's agree, is the Gandhi family. And Mr. Kharge, I assume, is now more instrumental also in the decision-making process. So if tomorrow Sachin Pilot is is indicated to be the preferred choice of chief minister going forward, I can tell you right now on your show, Mr. Gelot will be left with a handful of people. In fact, none may be, because all the MLAs will go with what the Congress high command wants. Okay. They won on a Congress ticket, and they will shift their allegiance immediately. It's interesting so you Mr. say Gelot that, because uh, two months back when the Congress president party. elections was happening, uh, I think close to 90 MLAs had gone with Mr. Gelot. But anyway, be that as it may. Let me ask Rakhi Rathod. Well, yes, Congress is infighting. There is Mr. Gehlot versus Mr. Pilot. But it's not like the BJP in Rajasthan is a united house either, Rakhi Rathod. Uh, actually, BJP has nothing to do with the crisis which is happening in Rajasthan uh, as far as Congress is concerned. Because uh, we have a concern with the... With the, with, the, with the people of Rajasthan who are suffering because of uh, the infight between the and the rift between the Congress leaders here. And as far as BGP is concerned, we have one leader with us, that is Narendra Modi, and under his, his leadership, we are going to fight the next assembly election. But the problem is that why Rajasthan is uh, topping the chart as far as number of rape cases are concerned, high rates of uh, petrol, diesel, electricity, high rate of uh, unemployment. So these are the burning issues issues and uh, because uh, no, but Congress petrol Party diesel has, joblessness electricity these are all problems across states not just in rajasthan but but we are topping the chart you look at the, uh, the the record of cmie we are we are we are uh, among the top 3 if uh, number of uh, if if, if the uh, uh, unemployment rate is concerned so it is because of the rift and it rift has been going from last 4 years from 2018 we have seen many incidences when the people the uh, the party leaders they are attack, attacking each no, other so they can are you uh, no, no, yeah, fair enough there is an open rift in the congress party but even in the bjp yes. can you please tell me ma'am uh, who is your chief ministerial face is it vasundhara rajay is it gajendra shekhawat is it arjun meghwal is it mr uh, uh, the the leader of the opposition there who who is going to be the face of the bjp going into next year's elections uh, the phase of the BJP would be decided by the parliamentary board, and uh, I think in BJP it it it, it is a it is a normal routine that uh, the chief minister's phase would be decided by the parliamentary board, and this will also happen. Okay, the, the, so the, let me the, ask uh, Rashid Kidwai. You know, this is open name calling by Mr. Gehlot on Sachin Pilot. Now here you have a predicament. Mr. Gehlot is getting away with it. Uh, there was this open rebellion that happened uh, a couple of months back when the Congress president elections were happening. There was a disciplinary committee that was sent there. Rajay Makan was part of it. Mr. Kharge was part of it. Mr. Kharge is now the Congress Party president. And the disciplinary committee has recommended very stern action against certain loyalists of Mr. Gehlot. But Mr. Kharge's Congress president is sitting on that report. He's not acting. Why? Uh, because, Azaka, there is no clear definition on what constitutes the Congress High Command now. We all have known that Congress High Command has, has been weak since 2014. But now a different kind of crisis is there. Mr. Kharge, who is the Congress president, but he's looking uh, uh, at uh, uh, the, the three Gandhis for some kind of direction. And Mr. Rahul Gandhi is so much preoccupied with his uh, Bharat Jodo Yatra. And Sonia Gandhi is gone into a kind of semi-retirement for the time being. And that leaves just, uh, you know, Priyanka Gandhi and she cannot take a political call on such a matter. So, uh, so it is for Mr. Kharge, but Mr. Kharge is not going to act on his own. So this kind of thing will go on. I have a no, suspicion. Rashid, this Rashid, will go it's on. a simple question. 
was there an active rebellion that happened in the Rajasthan unit of the Congress party amongst the MLAs, number one. Number two, was Mr. Gehloth uh, either overtly or covertly encouraging that rebellion? I think the committee that went, certainly Mr. Markin is very clear about the answers to those questions. And if Mr. Markin's report is to be, uh, uh, is to be accepted, then surely action should be taken. We've all seen what happened. Zaka, in the Congress history, the Congress chief ministers do not that kind of, you know, enjoy that support that some of the like Mamta Banerjee or some of the regional satraps do. The only exception was perhaps Devraj Ars uh, when Indra Gandhi was out of power. So in that context, uh, one can argue that uh, uh, Mr. Ashok Gallot had so many numbers and all, but it is actually the Congress leadership. If tomorrow Congress leadership decides to prop up any person, not only just Sachin Pilot, anyone else, the MLAs would back. But, but why are they not doing that? Here you have a veteran who has openly, uh, you know, encouraged rebellion against his own government, against his own uh, fellow Congress member, Mr. Pilot, uh, and the disciplinary committee vouches that. Uh, and yet, two months on, the leadership doesn't seem to be in a mood to act against Mr. Gehloot. Uh, Azaka, you hear what Mr. Jairam Ramesh has said that both have a, you know, thing and all the Congress is trying to, you know, prescribe some kind of homeopathy medicine when some kind of surgery is required. The Congress may not be, you know, liking P.V. Narsimha Rao much in its, uh, you know, publications, etc. But it actually subscribes to P.V. Narsimha Rao's, uh, you know, way of style of functioning that inaction is action in itself. Wow. P.V. Narsimha Rao could get away with it because he was Prime Minister. But today, the Congress is already in the doldrum. So, in you action, know, I, what I find amazing, uh, and I'll ask Kailash this, is A, you have an open rebellion. Uh, clearly, I think the uh, the disciplinary committee's report also very clearly said that it was actively encouraged by Mr. Gehloth. So, let's let's not beat around the bush here. It, it was Mr. Gehloth who, you know, overtly and covertly sort of encouraged that rebellion. Then you have uh, Mr. Gehloth being asked by the Gandhi family to become the Congress president and he you know, wanted to thwart that, therefore he encourages rebellion. So, neither has he listened to the Gandhi family and he has actively promoted this rebellion against him. And yet, two months on, no action is being taken against him. And Rashid says inaction is the best form of action. Like, please explain to me what message is this? If this were to happen in the BJP, whoever this chief minister was would have been history by now, boss. Absolutely. Zaka, if you see uh, in Gujarat, uh, close to some time ago, the chief minister, the entire cabinet, the entire council of ministers were just changed overnight, you know. And the thing with, you know, whenever we talk about the congresses or Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Yatra, there comes instances where we are made to think whether there is a time to Jodo the Congress more than Bharat. And, and time and again, we have discussed this. Now, Ashok Gehloji is not only a seasoned, you know, he's a very senior and seasoned politician of the, of the Congress party, but across party lines, he's, he's a seasoned and he's a veteran, if you call. And for him to use words for his own colleague in his own party, once uh, once upon a time, his deputy, and also the, the head of the, of the Congress party in Rajasthan to use such as Nikamma or to use words such as uh, like what he used today, Gaddar and, Gaddar all, and all, is yeah. very unparliamentary. I mean, it, it's not, uh, we, we do not expect that from him or uh, any politician of his uh, stature. Now, currently what is happening is that... Uh, Time has come for Malik Arjun Khadge to come uh, to step into this and show that he is the true party president. If he cannot do now, then whatever happened, the election, what happened on 18th of October about a month and a half ago, will open the, the farce of the uh, Congress party and keep mm. open in, in front of the public eye what they have been seeing in the Congress party, the broken Congress party, the disoriented Congress party since 2014. No, so Sanjay... We've had, this almost seems deja vu, you know why? Because uh, what, what's happening now in Rajasthan, there, there was a, almost a pre-run of that happening in Punjab uh, yeah. a, a few months ago, right? We saw what happened between Amrinder Singh and Navjot Singh Sidhu and this compromise candidate in Mr. Channi and then the entire electoral fiasco that happened in Punjab. It's sure. almost like the Congress party is happy to repeat that story this time in a different state, in the state of Rajasthan. Somebody needs to bell the cat. The... The, the, the result of, of this internecine war, we all know, if you go by the Punjab example, Congress party will lose and lose badly in Rajasthan. Why doesn't somebody bell the cat? Why doesn't somebody stem the cancer? You know, Zaka, you hit the nail on the head. 
I mean, prevarication, procrastination, postponement, these can never be solutions to a problem which involves two senior people who have been out in a public conflict since the last four years in one of the few states that the Congress has. I mean, the party is committing complete suicide by not being decisive. Absolutely right. You know, one of the reasons I got suspended from the Congress was because I openly publicly took a position to say that you need to have a change of guard and you need to do it transparently. And if it is not working out, take a tough call. You are absolutely right. The Congress has to bite the bullet. Otherwise, Rajasthan is gone. And I'm, I'm not surprised that the BGP spokesperson today is going to flash a very, you know, kind of a confident smile because everything that the, conf the, the, the Congress is doing today is adding to the BJP kitty. So the bottom line is this, that if a man like Ajay Makan, and you know, Zaka, I know him pretty well. He's a very moderate guy, soft-spoken, is a loyalist of the Congress. When he actually puts in his resignation and says, listen, I can't handle this anymore, that tells you of the completely pathetic and the desperate state that the Rajasthan unit is in. So I do hope that instead of, it's good to be pursuing the Bharat Jodo Yatra, I think it's a grand initiative, do it. But you've got to multitask in politics. This is troubleshooting time. And okay. you're absolutely right on the Punjab example. Sachin Pilot does not want to be a sacrificial lamb like Charanthi Singh Chani. You can't give him three months to win Rajasthan. You need to give him yep. full calendar year. No, that, that's a fair point. I mean, we, we saw what happened with Mr. Chani. He was a compromised candidate. Clearly, he didn't work. And the Congress party was reduced to its worst performance and I think the last 20 or 30 years in Punjab. And if this situation in Rajasthan is not addressed and not addressed forthwith, then the Congress party could again find itself uh, in a similar situation in Rajasthan. But I want to go back to uh, Rakhi Rathod. And please explain to me, ma'am, you know, how w the last four years of Mr. Gehlot's rule, how it's any worse off than the previous five years of uh, Vasundhara Rajay. Uh, actually, Zakar, look at the law and order condition in Rajasthan. If uh, you'll see that from last three years, according to NCRB reports, we are topping the chart as far as number of rape cases are concerned. Rajasthan was not known for these kind of incidences and it was known to be a silent uh, state earlier. But because of the lack of governance by the current government and Ashok Gehloji, he was busy in taking care of his chief ministership only because he happens to be the home minister of Rajasthan also. He was not able to take care of the the condition of law and order here and that is why it has collapsed badly so this is the main reason and the second point just is one that... just one point uh, as per yes. the ncrb report the latest NC ncrb report which is for uh, 2122 the yeah. uh, state that is stopping in terms of number of rapes against women is madhya pradesh it's not rajasthan uh, the latest is, uh, I think, 6,337 cases. The maximum number of cases were reported in 21 NCRB report in Rajasthan. And that is the maximum among all the states in India. Okay. Uh, my information is that Madhya Pradesh is one and Rajasthan is two. But anyway, no, that's, a, that's actually, a, a point of detail. The second position no, no, is of my, UP my, and the number of cases are 2,800 no, no, My issue is yeah. that what BJP is doing in Rajasthan is similar to what BJP is doing in all other states, whereas you pick up divisive issues, you pick up polarizing issues, you pick up... Nupur Sharma and what happened in Udaipur and everything and you make this yes. into a Hindu-Muslim election. That is the accusation against you. No, actually this kind of attitude was uh, was from the state government. Actually, look at the inaction from the state government for Karoli uh, riots happened because they were not able to arrest that culprit. In fact, the main accused in uh, uh, Karoli uh, riots is uh, not under the arrest of police yet. So it is because of and many, you know, uh, cases, in fact, many uh, section 144 were, was imposed during Ram Nami procession, during Diwali procession. But no, but, but but there was an order to for a free supply of electricity during Ramzan. So these are basically this is the hypocrisy of Congress government because they, they want to support a particular set of people in Rajasthan. And we want to show what is exactly happening in here. So okay. th these were the issues were taken by the BJP because there are actual issues. Okay, Ra let me go to Rashid. Rashid, what is Mr. Kharge's compulsion? It's not like he owes any allegiance either to Sachin Pilot or to uh, Ashok Gehlot. Why is he sort of sitting on this report of the disciplinary committee? Why is he so loath to taking action? Because Zaka, let's uh, 
let's remember this the political leadership of the congress party has been with the gandhis there were a lot of pro change changers including mr my friend mr sanjay jha who very strongly advocated there should be a non gandhi member as a congress president mm -hmm. now that non gandhi member is a congress president that person doesn't want to exercise power he is looking at tangent path he is looking at tugluk crescent he is looking at uh, uh, you know sujan singh park for some kind of guidance now when the gui guidance is not coming so he is just uh, sitting over just like I give example of PV Narasimha Rao. In action is an action. That is what he is doing because he is good at it. Now it is for the Congress people to realize what you know it means to have a non-Congress <laughs> president. I mean non-Gandhi as Congress president. Mm -hmm. No, no, but but tell me, uh, um, uh, Rashid, after having seen what happened in Punjab, to be again sitting on this and inaction is the best form of action, then that means that the Congress party has not learned any lessons from what happened in Punjab. Absolutely, but Zaka, we must remember Punjab was not lost uh, in a day. There was some kind of action was there in which you know Sidhu was made PCC president instead of being made uh, chief minister. Also, so there was a half-hearted attempt. And let's not forget uh, uh, Zaka, Mr. Uh, Malikarjun Kharge was in the thick of things. The idea of making Charanjit Singh Chandni as chief minister of Punjab was his brainchild. He was he was a there also he was an observer in, in Rajasthan also he was an observer. So there is something wrong uh, with the Congress because you just you if you change the name of you know who's a Congress president and who's a general secretary is not going to it's the work culture that has to change. I mean the, the example that you you know give about uh, BJP there is a decisive leadership. BJP did face political crisis even in Uttar Pradesh just uh, two years ago when over hundred. Millers had signed a letter against Yogi, but it was sorted out. It, had, it was sorted out in Uttarakhand. It was sorted out in uh, Karnataka. So, so there is some kind of effort is there. Now there is no effort. Inaction is a mantra. No, I, I think Ashish has, has a very valid point, Kailash. I mean, it's not like the BJP or BJP rule states don't have problems. We've seen that in Karnataka. We've saw that in UP also a few years ago. Uh, but somehow, either the central leadership steps in or the state leadership steps up. The issues, Uttarakhand is the most famous example. They had three chief ministers in the space of uh, a couple of years. But the central leadership steps in or the state leadership steps up and they fix the problem well in time before the elections. Because when once the election process rolls in, once the campaign kick starts, then it's like a well-oiled machine that is going after one target and one target only, which is to win the state at all costs. Whatever problems they have in their state units, they are fixed six months before the election process kicks in. Zaka, you know, Bharatiya Janata Party today is like a united family. You know, there are infightings everywhere. We all know that that's human tendency. But at the end of the day, the Bharatiya Janata Party is very successful in reaching a consensus on that. Whether that, uh, how, how they do that consensus is uh, the prowess, I would call it, that they have. Uh, the Congress party is completely headless. Uh, as I said in the beginning also, they are disoriented. And by having a non-Gandhi uh, party president, if that person has to look up to the Gandhis only, then it, it's a de facto, I mean, it, it's meaningless. The entire process was uh, meaningless. You know, I mean, I, I, I take the liberty of being a little crude here, but looking at the, the, the events that are happening with the party, they actually needed dialysis. Okay, they actually need dialysis. Uh, uh, Sanjay Jha, look at the elections between now and 2024. You know, 2024 is going to be the big one, of course, the general election. Gujarat and Himachal, I don't think the Congress party is, you know, even giving a, a, a serious fight. Maybe in Himachal, but in Gujarat, certainly not. Certainly compared to 2017, I don't think they are uh, giving a serious fight at all. Then you yeah. have Karnataka, where, of course, the Congress party stands a chance. It's, it is the principal opposition party. Then you have... Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh before the big one in 2024, the general election. And of those three, uh, frankly, I don't know if the Congress party is in a position to win any of those three states. Absolutely, Zaka. Think about it. It's such a crucial period for the Congress. I agree with you that in Karnataka, they seem to be in pole position. But every time the Congress has been a front runner, it has got this uh, predilection for committing some kind of a blunder or the other, Punjab being a classic example of that. No, now, the same for, thing is happening in Karnataka. Sidramaya versus yeah, uh, D.K. Shivkumar. Yeah. Same problem. Even Chhattisgarh. Even Chhattisgarh. Yes. The same problem, right? So, the, I think the inability of the Congress leadership to be decisive. You know, I always believe that if you've got problems, bring people together, sort it out, take a decision. Not taking a decision, as Rashi seems to be saying, 
is actually detrimental. You know what the BJP does differently? They take a decision. If it is wrong, they correct it. But if you're not going to take a decision at all and you're expecting some kind of a remarkable, you know, divine intervention to solve your problems, you're going to face exactly what you're facing today with Sachin Pilot's public humiliation done by Ashok Gelot that doesn't do well to the Congress at all. Sachin should be the chief minister. And if the Congress has to take a simple call here, who do you think should be your leader in 2023? If the Congress leadership believes is Mr. Gelot, let them appoint and continue with Mr. Gelot. If they believe it's Sachin Pilot, they should do it now. No, no, and the problem, the problem Sanjay, is, and I keep going back to this, if yeah. Sachin Pilot were to be named as the head of the CLP, as the next chief minister, yeah. I don't think the Congress leadership or, or frankly Sachin himself is confident of having the numbers because, you know, when that rebellion happened uh, two months ago, it was not 10 or 20 or 30 MLAs who were backing uh, Ashok Gehlot. It was like 90 MLAs yeah. out of 100 plus that the Congress has. That is not a but small number. I agree with you, Zaka. I mean, that is precisely the bluff that Mr. Gehlot has actually called the Congress, that he has the majority of the MLAs with him. Yes. But the truth is that tomorrow, if Mr. Kharge and the Gandhi family say Sachin will be the chief minister going forward till 2023, trust me, the majority of them, if not all, will back whoever is chosen in this case. Rashid, will that, will that happen or is it easier said than done? Will the entire I, I CLP in Rajasthan Zaka, fall in line Zaka, Zaka, if the Gandhi family and Mr. Kharge say Sachin Pilot is our chosen face to lead us into 2023? I, I, I think Zaka, it is now non-negotiable. Ra Rashid, and Rashid, please. Yeah, Punjab, thank you. What happened in Punjab is exactly what Mr. Sanjay Jai is saying. So nobody cited, uh, you know, out of that 78, 79 MLAs, nobody cited with the, uh, the outgoing chief minister, that being Amrinder Singh. And Amrinder Singh had, uh, you know, stature and he was very uh, mm. uh, towering kind of Congress leader of Punjab. So that would happen. I don't think not even five MLAs would cite with uh, uh, with Mr. Ashok Gehlot if uh, Congress leadership adopts that thing. But that requires courage of conviction. That requires, you look at Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Kharge is not even acknowledging what uh, uh, Ajay Bakar has been saying. So if that is a state of affairs and he wants Gandhis to come out and open and say this, I don't think Gandhi is going to do this. So no, this no, but is going again, to it, 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 this is happening in Mr. Kharge's home state also. There is again this internet sign fight between Sidramaya and, uh, uh, and D.K. Shivkumar. And frankly, I don't think, you know, the Congress is in a good position in Karnataka. But uh, frankly, I don't think they will name a chief ministerial candidate for fear that the other person will get upset. Absolutely. And Mr. Kharge knows all this. Mr. Kharge knows how he missed a chance of becoming, uh, uh, yeah. you know, chief minister himself uh, uh, many years ago. So he, he is a past master in all these things. So don't expect any kind of... Uh, uh, adventurous course uh, from his side. He is there right. to keep, you know, keep the seat warm till 2024 and he knows that mandate. Rakhi Rathor, I'll give you the final word. The only reason the BJP may do well in Rajasthan next year is because of infighting in the Congress and not necessarily because of any great track record of your own party. We have a good good uh, track record. In fact, for the, uh, we will go in the election with the good works done by the central leadership, by, by the Narendra Modi in Rajasthan, Rajasthan state and with the failure of uh, Rajasthan government who failed to deliver what they promised in 2018 with the people of Rajasthan here. You, you are, I'm once again asking 30 seconds, who is going to be the CM face? That would be decided by the parliamentary board and we have our leader as Narendra Modi and okay. he will be, he will be the face for the next election also. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Rakhi Rathod, um, Sanjay Jha, Rashid Kidwai and Kailash Adhikari for joining us. We'll see. Uh, if at all, the Congress leadership is able to tame this whole Sachin Pilot versus Ashok Gehlot war that is happening before the Bharat Juru Yatra enters Rajasthan in the first week of December. Quick break. When we come back on the other side, it's a Maha Border Nataka, the tussle for Belagavi once again reignited. Is it because of elections that are due in Karnataka in the next three to four months? Or is this a historical baggage that's not been addressed yet? Quick break. We'll see you on the other side. Tell us more.
Well, I mean, as you pointed out, these are very glaring accusations and allegations against the Delhi government. And, you know, their flagship program of education is something which has always been projected by the Delhi government and the chief minister as being the main reason why people are supporting the Ahmadmi party. You pointed out, but there's one more point which is there in the vigilance report. And that also talks about how private entities and they take a name of one specifically of Babbar and Babbar Associates saying that these private entities have been given contracts in the running of the administration. Remember, it's pretty much a similar allegation which was done as far as the excise policy was, scam was concerned over there too. The allegation was that private entities perceived to be close to a Delhi government, the ones who were running it and they were the beneficiaries. How does it play out on the ground? Well, we are seeing the MCD elections. In the MCD elections, education, health, Mohalla clinics, the schools run by a Delhi government all of that is under the scanner for by the BJP. The BJP's allegation is that this is a scam. They are unsubstantiated uh, achievements, which the uh, Delhi government is talking about. So I think with this latest revelation, where the Vigilance Committee has forwarded a report to a chief secretary, the chief secretary is expected to get responses and then file the response back to the Vigilance Committee. And then it goes on from there. Will be something which is going to give round to uh, lead to another fresh round of allegations, counter allegations between the BJP and the Aam Aadmi Party. Now, Pallavi, how do you think the op is going to be responding to this? Because this is a, these are massive findings that comes in line with the BJP's allegation of a classroom scam. Well, I mean, the Delhi Chief Minister has gone on record to say that how the central investigative agencies, whether it's ED, CBI, the Vigilance Committee, all of them are being misused by the BJP because they want to hit out politically at the Ahmadi Party. I don't think the AAP government is going to take these kind of allegations very seriously. They're going to say, there you go. Those allegations are absolutely unsubstantiated. And if you have the investigative agencies in your hand, then, of course, you target your political opponents. And they've been deciding to brazen it out, really, Aisha. We saw it in the case of Satendra Jain. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's no question of resignation. They're brazenly supporting Satendra Jain. So I think the ARP strategy is to dig their heels in. Absolutely. Pallavi, I do want you to stay with us. We are being joined by Mr. Harish Khurana of the BJP. Mr. Khurana, thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18. The big breaking development, the report has now been released about the classroom scam. There are very significant and scathing findings. What is your first reaction to this? See, from the day one, BJP was allegating that there's a huge scam in the classroom, uh, in the school scam. Uh, now today, the director of vigilance has also confirmed that and uh, I mean, recommended the fixing of the responsibility and the concerned officials of the education department and the PWD department also. I mean, the, the, the amount is around about 1,300 crore rupees. What we feel, BJP feel is, the amount is much, much bigger because in this case, the vigilance report, which is comma in, is around about only 2,000 odd uh, classroom, what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. But the actual construction of the rooms are there, about 21,000 rooms, which Ahmadi Party was claiming. So the, if you see the uh, quantum of the scam, it's much, much higher what BJP is allegating, and we have the proof of that. I mean, the role of Babbar and one company, the role of uh, the people, I mean, and the, the, the contractors which have, which have been given the contracts, this has to be investigated thoroughly. And I think the actual kingpin of this whole scam is Arvind Kejriwal and Sadhinder Jain and Manish Sisodia. Mr. Kurana, I would also like you to elaborate on how your party really found out that these irregularities were taking place. Because you had first raised these allegations in August, if I'm not wrong. See, uh, first of all, the, 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 this whole scam was started when the, when the agency was being hired for for, uh, uh, for constructing or, or or giving the design and everything with the Bamba and Rupa Associates. It was they have been given a contract without uh, any, any 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 tender. I mean, without he's a private person, and with the report also says that he's been appointed as a consultant, not only attending a crucial meeting uh, and. Uh, but uh, influence the uh, post tender of, 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 of from the minister also. The, the camp started over there uh, from the Babar and Babar Associate and has gone up to level that the, the amount of which sanction amount of the tender has gone escalated like anything. It has gone so much high that the quantum of the money which has been allocated by the vigilance department is around about 1,300 crores of only 2,000 odd uh, classrooms, what we're talking about. And how do you so, think this? Uh, you, sorry, continue. Sorry? Sorry, please continue. No, no, no. I mean, if you see, but 
back shoe construction in their their they are in two phases now. First phase was was around eleven nine thousand odd classrooms, and the second phase was eleven thousand odd classrooms. So the, the classrooms, the twenty one thousand odd classrooms have been have been constructed. So if you see this kind of pattern, will be continued uh, in in uh, further also further construction also. Then the quantum will go in thousand and thousand of crores. Absolutely, Mr. Kurana. I also I would like you to stay with us because we're also being joined by Mr. R P Singh of the B J P. Mr. R P Singh, we've just spoken to Harish Kurana about this new report about the classroom scam. There are pretty scathing findings. What has been recommended is a detailed probe. Could we have your reaction to this as well? Well, it is a scam of a kind. I mean, we're uh, classroom which could have been built in five lakh rupees or less than that but been uh, almost 30 lakh rupees was spent on each classroom and then even toilets were shown as the classroom so it is a scam of the kind and clash over belagavi in north karnataka has reached a flashpoint between the states of karnataka and maharashtra politicians from both states are not letting go of dozens of villages along this border district which both sides claim this is a pending dispute back from the 1960s when both states were formed there is a mahajan commission report there are numerous other reports which have given a broad outline of how these border villages can be split but the matter has been under challenge in the supreme court since 2005 it's been a good 15 years plus now why can't both states both bjp ruled by the way find a solution to this vexed border dispute Maharashtra and Karnataka are once again at loggerheads The battle for Belagavi was reignited after Karnataka Chief Minister Basavraj Bommai claimed that few villages under the Sangli district of Maharashtra were part of his state Bommai's statement created a massive controversy in Maharashtra The NCP asked the Maharashtra government to clarify their stand The other faction even took a swipe at Eknath Shinde claiming that he lacked courage to speak against his Karnataka counterpart. Hamari jo padosi rajya hai uske jo mukhyamantri hai Bommai aise lagta hai ki unke sharir mein bhoot ne pravesh kiya hai. Angad bhoot hai to manta na aur kya kaise pata nahi hamare 40 gaon par unhone daava thok diya aur ye aise koi bhi aayega aur hamare khilaf kuch bhi pakte chale jayega ye abhi bardasht nahi hoga. Meanwhile, Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra Devendra Fadnavis made it clear that they were committed to acquire the Marathi-speaking villages along the border, including Belagavi. त्यामुळे त्यांनी काही दावा ठोकला तरी देखील महाराष्ट्रातलं एकही गाव जाणार नाही आणि आमचा सीमाभाग आम्हाला परत मिळेल ही मला अपेक्षा Karnataka Chief Minister Basavraj Bommai labeled Fadnavis's statement as provocative. He claimed that they're ready for a legal battle against Maharashtra. our first priority is to fight a legal battle because ultimately when the case is pending in supreme court the maharashtra karnataka border dispute goes back to 1960 when both the states were formed since then maharashtra has staked claim over 865 marathi speaking villages along the border and karnataka has asserted rights over 260 kannada speaking villages but has the dispute been reignited just because of assembly elections in karnataka that's the question many are asking All right, let me go across to our guests who are joining us. Mohan Vishwa is spokesperson of the Karnataka BJP, Rahul Lonthe, Shiv Sena Shinde faction leader, Chandrasekhar Jha, Shiv Sena leader, Uddhav faction and Chandrasekhar Nene uh, is political analyst. Let me start with uh, Mohan Vishwa. You know this entire controversy kick started when Karnataka Chief Minister Mr. Bommai uh, said that there are about 40 villages uh, who are Kannada speaking on the border with Maharashtra and those will be acquisited uh, into Karnataka. There was no need for the Karnataka Chief Minister to make that statement now the matter is pending before the Supreme Court whatever the position of the state of Karnataka that could have been made clear in the Supreme Court has this been raised because of political reasons you know the elections are coming up there in Karnataka in 6 months from now has this been done for electoral purposes uh see zaka as far as the border dispute between maharashtra and concerned we are very clear that as you know the mahajan committee report which has been given in the year 1967 is final and the same 
All right, let's uh, try and go to Mohan Vishwa in a second. Uh, we'll try and fix his internet in a, in a moment. But let me ask Mr. Rahul of the Shinde faction. The Mahajan Commission report, which was submitted way back in the 1960s after the formation of both the states, has basically said that 865 villages uh, which are claimed by Maharashtra need to be given to Maharashtra. 264 villages should be transferred to Maharashtra and that 247 villages should remain with Karnataka. Now, this was way back in the 1960s that the Mahajan Commission uh, had recommended this compromise formula. It was the state of Maharashtra that went to the Supreme Court in 2005 challenging this decision. Why can't the state of Maharashtra accept the Mahajan Commission report? Look, in 1956, the Mahajan Commission, the Belgao, Nipani, Karwar, ये जो उसके साथ जो 865 गांव है ये महाराष्ट्र का हिस्सा पहले भी थे आज भी और कल भी रहने वाले हैं लेकिन महाजन कमीशन जो रिपोर्ट आई थी महाजन कमीशन ने ना उसका ज्योग्राफी किया ना उन्होंने कौन सा क्राइटेरिया निकष था वो क्राइटेरिया उन्होंने देखा नहीं और उन्होंने वन साइडेड कर्नाटक के बाजू में ये उन्होंने डिसीजन दे दिया था महाजन कमीशन ने उसके पहले जब महाजन कमीशन जो नियुक्त किया था केंद्र सरकार ने तो रिटायर्ड जज थे महाजन लेकिन कर्नाटक ने ही विरोध किया है कि हमें कोई कमीशन नहीं चाहिए हमारा हिस्सा है हमारे गांव है लेकिन महाजन कमीशन का जो रिपोर्ट था वो कर्नाटक के बाजू में ही चला गया हम पिछले पैंसठ साल से जो आठ से पैंसठ गांव है जो बेलगांव निपानी कारवा बालकी जैसे आठ से पैंसठ गांव है वहां पे मराठी चलता है वहां पे मराठी भाषा बोली जाती है वहां पे व्यवहार मराठी है वहां पे उन वहां पे संस्कार मराठी है वहां पे जितने काम होते हैं राहुल जी ये बताइए उन्नीस सौ मतलब फ्रॉम दिक्स नाइनटीन सिक्सटीज वहां पे चुनाव तो हो ही रहा है और ये जो महाराष्ट्र एकीकरण समिति जो पोलिटिकल पार्टी है उनके लिए तो कोई सीट भी नहीं मिला है इनफैक्ट पिछली बार जब जब कर्नाटक का विधानसभा चुनाव हुआ उनको एक भी सीट नहीं मिला अगर आप कह रहे हैं कि वहां पे मराठी स्पीकिंग लोग हैं उनका महाराष्ट्रियन पॉलिटिक्स से आ, उनका जुड़, आ, 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 वो जुड़े हुए हैं तो फिर एम को तो सीट आनी चाहिए लेकिन सब लोग तो या तो कांग्रेस को या तो बीजेपी को वोट कर रहे हैं वहां पे तो पॉलिटिकली स्पीकिंग ये इश्यू तो मुद्दा ही नहीं है ना ये तो नॉन इश्यू है मैं अभी मैं अभी आपको मैं आपको यही बता रहा हूं कि ये अभी भी की बात कर रहे हैं लेकिन जब से कर्नाटक में जो हमारे गांव गए आठ से पांसठ गांव आठ सौ पैंसठ गांव गए वहां पे जितने विधायक थे वो महाराष्ट्र के महाराष्ट्र की करण समिति के चुन के आते थे वहां पे जो बेलगांव महानगर पालिका थी वहां पे मराठी जो महाराष्ट्र की करण समिति का ही मेयर चुन के आता था लेकिन बाद में कर्नाटक सरकार ने क्या किया है कि वहां पे मराठी जनता जो उनके क्षेत्र में जिन्होंने वो वहां पे बुलाई है मतलब महाजन कमीशन के रिपोर्ट से जो हमारे गांव वहां पे चले गए उनको लग रहा था कि यहाँ पे मराठी लोग एमएलए बन रहे मराठी मेयर बन रहे बेलगांव महानगर चंद्रशेखर झा उन्होंने चंद्रशेखर झा जो आठ या जो भी गांव आप बता रहे हैं महाजन कमीशन रिपोर्ट वॉज दैट टू हंड्रेड ऑफ दोज विलेजेस आउट ऑफ दैट एट हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी फाइव ट्रांसफर टू महाराष्ट्र द रेस्ट रिमेन्स विद कर्नाटका ना माई पॉइंट इज there is a legislative assembly uh, second uh, division of the legislative assembly that's been built in belgaum uh, the political representation there is largely for the karnataka political parties what basis is maharashtra claiming uh, these 865 villages uh, see uh, the dispute uh, comes in 1960 yes and now we are in 2022 and uh, if you see uh, the result of that dispute which comes to supreme court in 2005 in 2022 we could not achieve any result because for the last 7 uh, and 1/2 years or uh, so 7 uh, years uh, the government of uh, devendra fadnavis used to rule the maharashtra uh, in between we had the opportunity we tried to progress the uh, uh, case in the supreme court but still no what uh, did you do what did you do in the supreme court the what what did how did you take material action to move the case forward yes we 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 took the action we mentioned the matter because it's a dispute like cavery dispute which was running for uh, decades in supreme court it was at last it, is, it was decided by the supreme court so we argued before the supreme court that the matter should be settled because it's a long dispute running between the two states okay now the thing is that if you see how the fadnavis uh, government is getting exposed in this that there is a scarcity of water in the district now the scarcity of the uh, water in the district is causing hamper to the population there mm -hmm. so they signed a petition that they will merge with the karnataka state and in turn 
the Fernavis government has taken no action. So this is how the government is getting exposed. Now, okay. if this Give me a moment, Mr. Shah. Not, not I'm going to come anything. back to you in one second. We're getting a piece of breaking news on this story. Now, this is flared up further between the Maharashtra and Karnataka state governments. Now, the Maharashtra chief minister, Mr. Shinde, has decided to give more funds to Marathi organizations that are working in the 865 villages in the border with Karnataka in a bid to try and strengthen them. Uh, this will only further flare up uh, events that are going on and this sort of uh, back and forth that's been going on between the states of Karnataka and Maharashtra. Now a decision has been taken by the Maharashtra Chief Minister, Mr. Shinde, to grant additional funds to uh, organizations that are working, Marathi organizations that are working in these 800 odd villages on the border with Karnataka. Chandrasekhar Nene, why has this <clears throat> issue suddenly now flared up? Because this, like uh, both our previous speakers said, has been there pending since the formation of uh, both of these states since the right. 1960s. There is a right. formula, a well laid out formula by the Mahajan Commission. In fact, the state of yes. Maharashtra went to the Supreme Court in 2005. We are in yes. 2022 and the Supreme Court has also not been able to resolve it. Why right. has this issue flared up now? Yeah, uh, Zakha, there are three reasons. One is that the case has been there, as you rightly said, for about 11, uh, actually 17 years and there is no decision coming forward. It is like a festering boon. Secondly, it actually, the problem is from 1960 onwards. So it is a festering wound of, wound of a very large proportion. But the most important thing is there is election next year in Karnataka. That is the critical point here. Plus there has been a government change in Maharashtra also. So both of the governments are trying to do one-upmanship there to show that the elections can be won on an emotional basis. In fact, Belgavi, as the Karnataka people call it, they created a second capital in Belgavi just to strengthen yeah. the Karnataka uh, uh, faction into Belgam. Because right from history onwards, Belgam's original name was Verugram because there was a lot of, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> Bas was being uh, grown there, so it was called Velugram, that is a uh, town of uh, Bas, which is bamboo. But uh, later on, its name changed to Belgam. So Belgam was part of Marathi people, and Belgam was a predominantly Marathi location. As uh, somebody just mentioned, the Maharashtra Ekikaran Samiti, the MES, continuously was winning in Belgam to show that the people in Belgam want to be in the Marathi state. That apart, but since it was given away, uh, the Karnataka government thought it prudent to increase their strength in Belgaum, so they actually improved situation in Belgaum. Mm -hmm. They created, they actually changed the name to Belgavi, that's the Kannada name, and they created a second capital there. Yeah. That's where the, actually uh, in December itself there is going to be a, a session of assembly the session, Karnataka yeah. assembly in Belgavi. Mm. So perhaps that is one of the reason why the issue has Okay, so let me up. ask uh, Mohan Vishwa this. I mean, it was all status quo up until the state right. of Karnataka decided to A, build a, a second Vidan Sauda, I think it's called a Suvarna Sauda in uh, Belgaum. And secondly, uh, you're having uh, all the winter sessions of the Karnataka state legislature in, uh, in Belagavi. My, my question is, what was the need for that? This uh, pending dispute, it's been hanging fire for the last 40-50 years. What was the need for starting a second legislature uh, in this uh, district? See, Zaka, when you go by the State Reorganization Act 1950, Till now, no one have questioned about the state which has been reorganized because under that particular act. So that particular test also has been passed. Post that, we had a margin committee report in 1967, whereas the Maharashtra went to the court in 2004. What they were doing for 37 years then, why they were keeping quiet? So they, they were the one who made political. And uh, regarding the change in the name, it's not only Belagam, which we made it as Belagavi, which changed the name of Mysore to Mysuru, then Bangalore to Mangaluru. There are other places also. Then Bangalore to Bengaluru, okay? A lot of other places of the name also have been changed. And also, like as you rightly pointed out, the test is again the final democracy. Why ME is not able to win the recent Belagavi Municipal Corporation election? They have been washed out. Whereas the Bharatiya Janata Party was the one who won the election and who, you know, who is into administration there. Why people are rejecting them? Come on, we are very clear. We are banking upon <coughs> the Mahajan Committee report, which was issued then. And my one more question again is, mm. look at the delay between 2004 and 2022. It's almost 18 years. You know, there was no fast movement from the Maharashtra government also to take the issue to the next level. It is basically, you know, to create politics. Ajit Pawar has made this kind of statement. 
see when he was part of Congress government in that Mahavika Sangadi, why he was keeping quiet then? Okay. And isn't didn't his uh, Ra Rahul say, Rahul Londe uh, from the uh, uh, Udhav then? sorry from the Shinde faction. Rahul ji, ये बताइए 2004-5 से ये Supreme Court के सामने हैं. ना पिछले सरकार ने कुछ किया ना आपकी सरकार ने कुछ किया सुप्रीम कोर्ट के सामने अब आप कह रहे हैं कि वहां के जो विलेजेस हैं वहां के मराठी ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस को आप और पैसे देंगे एम जो है महाराष्ट्र एकीकरण समिति उनको कोई सीट नहीं मिल रहा कोई सपोर्ट नहीं है म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन चुनाव जो अब हाल ही में हुआ है वो, वो, वो उस चुनाव में एम हार गई तो क्या बेसिस है महाराष्ट्र के क्लेम पर और दूसरी चीज ये बताइए अभी उद्धव ठाकरे कह रही कि हम महाराष्ट्र बंद करेंगे जब उद्धव ठाकरे सरकार में थे तो क्या किया उन्होंने सुप्रीम कोर्ट के सामने क्या किया उन्होंने मेरा 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 यही कहना है अभी महाराष्ट्र के जो मुख्यमंत्री विद्यमान मुख्यमंत्री एकनाथ जी शिंदे ये 1984 में ये एकनाथ शिंदे साहब यही सीमा प्रश्न में बेलगांव में गए थे आंदोलनकर्ता के ऐसे ऐसे रूप में वो वहां पे आंदोलन करने गए थे ये एकनाथ शिंदे साहब के ऊपर कर्नाटक पुलिस ने लाठिया बरसाई थी ये एकनाथ शिंदे साहब है जो एक महीने तक बेलगांव के जेल में बंद रहे थे और वही आंदोलक एकनाथ शिंदे आज महाराष्ट्र के मुख्यमंत्री जिन्होंने हर तरफ से बेलगांव प्रश्न पे अपनी आवाज उठाई है पिछले पच्चीस साल से आज वो इस महाराष्ट्र के मुख्यमंत्री है चार दिन पहले ही उन्होंने महाराष्ट्र के सहयाद्री गेस्ट हाउस पे एक मीटिंग बुलाई वहां पे महाराष्ट्र के एकीकरण समिति के सदस्य भी थे डेप्यूटी चीफ मिनिस्टर हमारे देवेंद्र फडणवीस साहब भी थे महाराष्ट्र में यही बता रहा हूं कि बेलगावी मतलब कर्नाटक भी मोहन विश्वास जी बता रहे थे कि खाली बेलगांव का बेलगावी नहीं किया है मैसूर का किया है बेंगलुरु का बेंगलुरु किया है लेकिन सबसे ज्यादा जो अन्याय जो अत्याचार है ये मराठी मानूस के ऊपर ही वहां पे क्यों हो रहे हैं नहीं नहीं ये ये नहीं नहीं राहुल जी राहुल जी राहुल जी ये बताइए जो जो नहीं नहीं जो महाराष्ट्र एकीकरण समिति है ना वो चुनाव जीत रही है ना उनके पास म्यूनिसिपल कॉरपोरेशन है ना उनके पास कोई एमएलए है तो किस बेसिस पे आप कह रहे हैं कि वहां के लोग महाराष्ट्र के साथ जाना चाहते हैं ये 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 अगर क्राइटेरिया लगाएंगे कि बाबा वहां पे एमएलए नहीं है मराठीकरण समिति के तो जहां जहां देश में कांग्रेस के राज्य थे वहां भी कांग्रेस के राज्य नहीं ना अभी मतलब बहुत सारे कांग्रेस के स्टेट बीजेपी के पास गए तो ऐसे बताएंगे कि वो स्टेट भी नहीं नहीं वो कांग्रेस ने जहां जहां पॉलिटिकली हारा वहां के लोग ये नहीं बता रहे कि ये नहीं बता रहे ना कि हमको दूसरे स्टेट के साथ जाना है वही तो इश्यू है बता रहा हूं मेरी बात पूरी करने दीजिए सर जी कि पहले महाराष्ट्र एकीकरण समिति के सेवन सात सात एमएलए वहां पे चुन के आते थे हमारा बेलगांव महानगर पालिका में कॉरपोरेशन में हमारे महाराष्ट्र एकीकरण के मेयर चुन के आते थे मतलब इन्होंने क्या किया फिर बेलगांव में मराठी परसेंटेज बढ़ रहा है बेलगांव में मराठी जनता एक एकजुट हो रही है तो वहां पे जो हमारे महापौर थे तत्कालीन मेयर थे उनको केबिन पे जाके मारना वहां पे छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज का अवमान करना मतलब जो जो अन्य जिस प्रकार से अन्याय करना चाहिए वो ये राहुल जी ये सब चीजें सालों से चल रही है आपकी सरकार अभी हाल ही में तीन चार पांच महीने हो गए आपके आने के बाद क्या कर रहे हैं आपकी सरकार मैं आत्मविश्वास के साथ बता रहा हूँ मैं आप ये देखिए अभी आपने ही कहा कि चार महीने ही सरकार को हुए है उद्धव ठाकरे जी अभी जो महाराष्ट्र बंद की घोषणा कर रहे हैं मैं कल भी एक चैनल पे कहा था कि बाबा जैसे बाहर के राज्य रहते हैं वो अस्मिता दिखाते है प्रादेशिक अस्मिता एक हो जाते है पक्ष एक साथ आते है संस्था एक साथ आ जाती लेकिन महाराष्ट्र में ऐसा नहीं होता है महाराष्ट्र में आज उद्धव ठाकरे संजय राउत जो जनरल डायर के उपमा सुप्रिया सुले दे रहे हैं तो मैंने कल भी एकनाथ शिंदे साहब ने भी अपील की है आज अजीत पवार साहब ने भी अपील की है प्लीज रिस्पॉन्स वॉट राहुल सिंह की आप तो सरकार में थे दो ढाई साल से आपकी सरकार चल रही थी उद्धव ठाकरे की सरकार चल रही थी तो आपने कुछ नहीं किया सुप्रीम कोर्ट में अभी आके आप कह रहे हैं कि महाराष्ट्र बंद होगा तो कुछ तो करना चाहिए था आपको जब सरकार में थे आप आपने कुछ नहीं किया देखिए जब सरकार झा तो जी 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 बोलिए जी जब सरकार में थे तो हमने तो बहुत कुछ किया बट इनके आने के बाद तो लगता नहीं है कि वहां कोई डेवलपमेंट वर्क भी चल रहा है If the population is facing the scarcity of water and uh, this is being exposed in the open forum, in, in the open forum, then then उसके बाद ये प्रश्न जब उठते हैं तो ये प्रश्न जो है इसकी उत्तर जो है दाई अभी इस government को देने होंगे क्योंकि इनके against में ये petitions गए हैं वो बोलते हैं वहाँ के population बोलते हैं कि ये जो कर रहे हैं ये हमारे पास पानी नहीं है हम scarcity में हैं और हमको देखा नहीं जा रहा है 
तो ये इस गवर्नमेंट की असफलता है the sk dhar commission which was the linguistic provinces once again once again once again the linguistic provinces commission the sk dhar commission which was set up in 1948 had argued against the linguistic basis of reorganization of states after the states reorganization act of 1956 we had new states like tamil nadu andhra pradesh uh, mysore kerala of course all of this in southern india the only linguistic fight that happened jandrashekar nene was between maharashtra and karnataka over this marathi speaking uh, population in belgavi no other place are you seeing you have fight over water fight over rivers etc but nowhere are you seeing fight over territory because of linguistic minority emotionally high this issue was and to your question what uh, mes is now failing in this election mes won all those election that didn't change the decision in any case so this time it should not be said now you have failed the election now the decision should go against maharashtra what should have happened is a, a new commission perhaps could have been set up mm-hmm. bring all the parties together have a sensible discussion this is not india pakistan yep. this is all within the same country i mean if half of them are in Bang- kannada speaking half of them are in marathi speaking that doesn't make really a difference it is the politicians jo isko hawa dete hai they create uh, this kind of divergence so that elections can be won on an emotional issue unfortunately in india still elections are won more on an emotional issue than on an issue of uh, real performance and things like that if real performance is to be talked out what did shivsena de- do for those two and a half years yeah. when they were in power nothing was done if those villages are not having water by the way those villages are having water now that uh, actually the problem is 2016 those villages of zat zat is the name of the taluk the taluk people 42 villages said that we want to go to karnataka this was to provoke the maharashtra government to solve their water problem okay. their water problem is solved as per the minister's assurance yesterday so hmm. that is not no more the issue bombay actually raised this issue <coughs> to raise the temperature there is nothing else this is a non issue no, it has been the, raised the, the whole thing flared up mohan vishwa since 2012 when the karnataka legislature session started being organized in belgavi uh, the mes had protested <coughs> they had called a maha melava rally outside what is called the suvarna saudha the venue of the legislature meeting what was the compelling reason for the state of karnataka mohan vishwa to spend 400 crore rupees of tax payer money to build a new <laughs> legislative building in belgaum the northernmost district and have the legislature the winter legislature session every year there no other state has uh, two assemblies see zaka if you take karnataka there was bit of disparity in, in in terms of development between north karnataka and south karnataka to take out the disparity to have more you know the elected representatives to spend more time in north karnataka a separate assembly session was created just to create discipline that's what nothing else and also somebody was speaking about the development Mr. Vishwa, there are so many more districts in north what karnataka from bidar to uh, to gulbarga to raichur you could have yadgir you could have you could have had the Uh, second assembly building any any of these building any of these districts the fact no, that you let, chose let, to do it in uh, belgaum is for political uh, reasons let's accept that no 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 it's, it's not <laughs> political reasons okay? because we accepted margin committee that was the final report what we accepted that was the belgaum belongs to us so that is why we built there what's wrong in that so that stand is even today we are very clear but regarding the development to take up the same mes if we take up their manifesto what development assurance they used to give to this bordering areas nothing else apart from the same emotional issue of border issue but what did we do you take belgaum itself belgaum is the you know second highest populated state in the state of karnataka which okay. has access to national highways railways and also airports you see the kind of flights landing over there the kinds of connectivity we have from belgaum across india No okay, so let me ask you one final question the reason so why this whole thing flared up sir 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 give me 10 seconds the whole thing flared up after karnataka chief minister mr bombay right. raised this issue talked about 40 villages on the border and how the state of karnataka was continuing to give pension to freedom fighters there and how kannada language was being promoted there and so on and so forth what was the pressing need for the karnataka chief minister to raise this issue now now that in 3 months there are going to be elections in your state correct <laughs> this zaka as i told you earlier you take an example of belgaum city corporation election itself which has happened 68 months ago there was no near election in the state of karnataka mm. so it was never raised by then we went purely based on development so i don't think so we should link this issue with the recent elections right now because okay. we already having a strong hold in belgaum and we have marathi mlas and we have created a maratha development board where karnataka government has 
you know allocated 50 crores of amount of money okay. here but all right i'm going to leave it at that i want to thank uh, mohan vishwa chandrasekhar jha rahul and also mr nene for joining us we'll leave it at that चडा ने क्या कहा सिर्फ उसने कहा था कि हाय गलवान अब गलवान में क्या हुआ था जब गलवान में गलवान क्लैश हुआ था तभी ऐसा था कि चाइनीज सोल्जर्स हमारे एल के बॉर्डर के अंदर घुस गए थे उसी लिए हमारे 20 मार्टर्स ने अपनी सेक्रीफाइस दिया सुप्रीम सेक्रीफाइस दिया और उन उनसे लड़ाई लड़े लेकिन तब भी हमारे प्रधानमंत्री ने कहा था ना कोई घुसा था ना कोई घुसे हैं तो सही माने में उन लोगों का अपमान किसने किया watching news epicenter with me maria shakil there is a multi front war underway between the bjp and the congress with two major flash points emerging over the bharat jodo yatra and the aftermath of actor richa chadda's galwan gaff today controversy erupted over the bharat jodo yatra led by rahul gandhi bjp's amit malviya tweeted out a video of the yatra from kargon in madhya pradesh claiming pakistan zindabad slogans were raised Amit Malviya also shared a screenshot of the video posted by the Congress party in Madhya Pradesh and said that the post was deleted by the Congress unit after they realized that pro Pakistani slogans were being yelled at. The Congress has dismissed the charges claiming the video has been doctored by the BJP as it is spooked by the rising popularity of the yatra. Congress leader Jairam Ramesh said that they will take legal action against the BJP. and are ready for such tactics meanwhile after actor racha chadda came under fire for her galwan says high tweet mocking the army's pitch that it is 